Hi, I'm Lisa Wagner. I'm a member of the Minnetonka School Board, and as part of our ongoing community engagement, we've developed this brief presentation we like to call School Board 101. It's designed to give you the basics of how a school board operates in our community. Today we're going to talk a little bit about who the school board is, what we do, when we do it, where we do it, and how you can communicate with the school board. The school board is a seven-member body made up of individuals from our community who are elected for four-year terms. There are approximately one half of the board is up for election every two years. So essentially we have three members up for election in one year and then two years later four members up for election. And that way that allows us to have some continuity on the school board. There are four officers on the school board. We have a chair, a vice chair, a clerk, and a treasurer. The school board governs by majority vote. This means that on each issue we're deciding on, once a, a vote has been taken, that will be the decision made by the board. It's not a consensus building decision, so there may be votes where a majority of the board is supportive, but some members have chosen to vote against it. The school board assigns liaisons to various district committees. That allows us to participate in these committees and to inform the committees about things that are going on at the school board level that may affect their work. It also allows the board to remain informed about what's going on in each committee and helps us to utilize the results of those committees work in our board decisions. What we do. The school board manages the district superintendent. The superintendent is the one employee of the school board. All of the other administrators, principals, and staff of the district report up through the superintendent. So this, it is not the school board's job to administer their work, but to administer the work of the superintendent. The board establishes and approves district goals and strategic initiatives. The board also evaluates and approves curriculum and programs and often has extensive discussions at study sessions before decisions are made on these. In addition, the board approves policy, budgets, master plans, and bids. And all of these have defined processes that take place each year. Some of them are governed by state statutes, such as our bidding process, while others are governed by our school board policies. When we do it, the board meets monthly to have business meetings. These meetings are typically held on the first Thursday of each month. The board also meets monthly in study sessions. These are typically held on the third Thursday of each month and are working sessions where the board has discussions about upcoming issues and meets with administrators to brainstorm and evaluate potential ideas. The board also holds listening sessions. These are typically held seven to eight times each year with various stakeholders in the community. They are designed to allow the board to be more informed as we work on our goals each year and to hear from the community about initiatives that have been taking place. The board also has an annual goal setting retreat. This is typically held in the summer and allows the board to evaluate the past school year and look forward to the next school year by setting the district goals. Finally, the board also is involved in the evaluations of the superintendent. There are several different times of the year that the superintendent is evaluated by the board. First, there is a mid-year evaluation, which is held in February, and involves several meetings to discuss where we're at during the year and where the superintendent is at in meeting the school board's goals for the year. Then there is also a year-end review process. This is typically held over several meetings in June and allows the board to reflect on the school year and reflect on the superintendent's performance during that year. Where we do it. The school board's meetings are all held in the community room at the District Service Center, which is located on Highway 101, just next to Clear Springs Elementary School. Streaming video of our monthly meetings is available on the web and can be found at the link attached. This allows you to take a look at the meetings, to review what was going on, and in fact to index the meetings by looking at the agenda. Say, for example, you were interested in hearing about an update on the Minnetonka Aquatics Program. You can go to the meeting that discusses that review of that program, click on that agenda item, and only watch the portion of that meeting that covers the review of the aquatics topic or any other topic that you might be interested in. We also have our contact information, our agendas, our minutes, and all of the approved policies on the district website. You can access them through the link below. This allows you to take a look through policies, to read through things that are coming up on the school board meetings, and to review work that has been done by the board, both at our monthly meetings and at our monthly study sessions. How you can communicate with the board. 
The school board welcomes involvement from the community and encourages people to attend our meetings and to be involved in our efforts. We have community comments which are allowed at all business meetings. At these monthly business meetings, the ones that are held at the first, of the the first Thursday of the month, you are given the opportunity to address agenda items only, which means basically that if you would like to speak at that meeting, you need to address a topic that is on the posted agenda. The board also has a time called citizen input at all of our study sessions. These citizen input times allow you to provide input on any topic that you wish to address the board on, meaning you don't have to have a discussion on a topic that is on the posted agenda, but are invited to come and share with us any thoughts that you have about issues in our school district. You can also email the board. If you use the school board at minnetonka.k12.mn.us email address, the entire board will receive your thoughts and have a chance to reflect upon them. In addition, you can call the board. All of the phone numbers and contact information for the members of the board are posted on the website. They're also available in our annual calendar publication. The school board welcomes the chance to dialogue with members of the community one-on-one -on -one or in small groups to have a more two-way conversation about issues that are before the board. We also encourage you to complete the district surveys. These are sent out periodically about topics of special interest and there also is a year-end evaluation survey that is sent to all parents in the district. We use these surveys to inform board decisions, to evaluate community satisfaction with programs, and to help us to learn more about issues that the community is thinking about at the time. In conclusion, the board is planning on attending PTO and PTA meetings in the fall to share our 2010-11 board goals. We also encourage you to invite us to your events. The board members often attend events at all of the buildings and we come as our schedules allow us to do so. If you have any questions about the Minnetonka School Board or our operations or would like to learn more about any topics that have been covered in this presentation, we encourage you to contact the School Board. Again, you can do this via email by school emailing us at schoolboard at minnetonka.k12.mn.us. Thank you so much for being a part of our community. We are honored to serve the students and the staff and the community members of the Minnetonka School District and we are proud of the child-centered excellence we've been able to develop with your support.